Well, here we are. This is the book of Romans. We are in chapter 16. Uh, this is going to be the review of chapter 15. So we have the concluding admonitions to strong brethren. This was verses 1 through 13 that we dealt with. A was bear with the scruples of the weak. Uh, that's really all of us because we all have weakened conditions and weakened times. You know, I don't think anybody is so strong that we can uh, look and say that there are not moments when we uh, are not weak. I know I have them. Uh, so we need to uh, um, uplift one another, bear with one another, help one another. Um, Try to please your brethren as Christ did. Uh, with help from God and scripture, we are to be patient uh, so we uh, may together glorify God in all that we do. It's not about trying to bring any honor and glory to ourselves or even attention to ourselves. But everything that we do is to be uh, give the glory to God. We are to receive one another uh, as Christ received us to the glory of God meaning we are to uh, uh, welcome, to allow people in our sphere of influence, to allow people to, you know, come to us. We are supposed to be salt and light, which means we are to draw people to us, not only the outside world, but also brothers and sisters, uh, so that we can um, share share our testimonies, share our triumphs, she even share our, our burdens and our losses because each of us, the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So there's, I don't think there's anything that one person has gone through that another person has not or is about to go through. So we need one another to help uh, feed off of one another. Let's put it that way. I get to receive one another as Christ received us to the glory, as Christ served Jews and Gentiles in fulfillment of prophecy. You know, we were talked about uh, Isaiah already given prophecy that uh, the word and Christ was coming to the Gentiles as well as the Jews. Uh, and then we had Paul's prayer uh, for them uh, that God might fill them with all joy and peace in believing. And we all need joy and peace. And that they might abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And Paul's plan to see them. This was the, the, the churches in Rome. Uh, the reason for writing to them. Uh, he is well aware of their own abilities. Um, word is always going out. And whether or not we see one another, we feel one another, we can hear uh, from one another. Uh, and, you know, especially as a pastor, God has given me um, wisdom, an ability to know who I know I can depend on, who I know I can uh, trust, who I know will Lift me up when I need lifting up. Uh, simply reminding them as is appropriate from a minister to the Gentiles. Like I said, it was really, I thought it was very interesting when we see that Paul, a uh, highly educated Jewish um, scholar, was sent primarily to the Gentiles. Whereas Peter, a blue collar worker, not highly educated, more than his ministry was to the Jews. You would think it would be the opposite way around, but God has a way of putting in place whom he wants for the reason he wants. And though he normally aims to preach where Christ has not been named, meaning he, what Paul never wanted to do was go and step on somebody else's toes or steal someone else's thunder. He always wanted to go somewhere where people had not heard the name of Jesus. He did not go in 
and uh, oh, here's a here's a church. Let me go in and let me start talking all about you know what I know, and not knowing what's already been preached, or you know, it's kind of like still in thunder. And that's what Paul never wanted to do. He always wanted to go to the unchurched, those that really didn't know, or those that have been to church but had been struggling and not really understanding what was being told to them. So he kind of made sure that wherever he went, his ministry was not only to help those that were uh, struggling or those that were a part of a ministry, but mostly to those who had not heard the name of Jesus. And his travel plans. You say he planned to go uh, to Spain via Rome. Um, but first, uh, to Jerusalem uh, with a contribution from those in Macedonia, and I still have a hard time pronouncing this. I think it's Achaia. If I got it wrong, hey. Sounds like a kind of tea. Wait, wait till you see today's lesson. <laughs> you think I'm having a hard time pronouncing? Yeah, you're going to enjoy this today. A request for prayer and prayer for them. Uh, his request for their prayers and for his safe journeys. He wanted to make sure that they would cover him in prayer, intercede for him. And his prayer that God be with them. So pray for me and I'm also praying for you. So that's kind of what we did in chapter 15. We're coming to the very ending. Uh, so if there's any questions or any comments on what we went over last week, uh, if there are none, let's go forward and let's do today's objectives in studying this chapter, which is the last one. In this chapter, this last chapter, Paul closes with miscellaneous instructions, greetings, warnings, and a doxology. Of particular note are his comments concerning Phoebe, a servant of the church in uh, Centuria. Also, his greetings to Priscilla and Aquila remind us of how instrumental this couple was in the spread of the gospel in verses 5 to 3 to 5a. Uh, the remaining greetings from Paul remind us that there are many others who contributed uh, to the growth of the church in the first century. See this in verses 5b to 16. Final warning is given against those who would cause divisions and occasions of stumbling, contrary to what Paul had taught in his epistle, verses 17 through 18. But above all else, Paul wanted to ensure their continued obedience in the gospel, verses 19 to 20. Paul's companions at Corinth add their greetings, 21 to 24. And Paul closes with uh, this wonderful epistle with an expression of praise to God for the revelation of the gospel, which was leading to the obedience of faith among all nations. It will end up verses 25 through 27. So our points to ponder will be uh, the example of early Christians, such as Phoebe, Priscilla, and Aquila, and many others. The warning against those who cause divisions and offenses. So I'm going to tell you now, these names, <laughs> I hope you can pronounce them or just bear with me. I will try to pronounce them. If I, if I skip over it, you open up your Bible and you try to pronounce it. We'll just take turns. Because I'm going to tell you, yeah, I got some goodies in here, okay? I, I think that if he mispronounces them, we should split the church. Yeah, there you go. Oh, <laughs> By okay. those who can pronounce and those who can't. <laughs> How's that? Or think they can. Uh, yeah, no, either you can or you can't. It's one or the other. <laughs> there you go. Concluding instructions and farewells, Romans 16, verses 1 through 24. It says, I commend to you, Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church of Centuria, that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints and assist her in whatever business she has need of you. For indeed, she has been a helper of many and of myself also. Kind of want to stop. 
For those who believe women don't have a place in the church to either preach or to believe that squash all that. <laughs> he's he, he he's telling you right now, there's this one sister who has been so instrumental in helping, in assisting, assisting in whatever business she has need to. Didn't matter what was asked of her. She was there. She did it. She did the, I, I believe she either scrubbed floors or served meals or gave comfort or gave a word. She was there. I praise God for every woman in the church who has the ability to be a leader and to give out blessings. Amen. Number three, it says, greet Priscilla and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus who risked their own necks for my life, to whom not only I gave, I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. These two people, hey, they didn't care what was going on. They put their lives on the line to help this man. Likewise, greet the church that is in the house, that is in their house. Greet my beloved, all right, Epinetus, <laughs> who is the first fruits of Achaia to Christ. <laughs> Greet Mary, hey, I got that one, Yay. who labored much for us. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my countrymen who, uh, my countrymen and my fellow prisoners who are of note among the apostles who also were in Christ before me. Greet Amplius, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow workers in Christ. And Stachys, my beloved. Greet Apellus, approved in Christ. Greet those who are of the household of Aristobulus, hey, greet Herodian, my countrymen. Greet those who are of the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, <laughs> who have labored in the Lord. Greet the beloved Persis who labored much in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother and mine. Greet, oh man, this yeah. is where I really gets me right now. <laughs> a centurious, a secret, whatever, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Philegion, Hermas, Patrobus, Hermes, and the brethren who are with them. <laughs> <laughs> Greet, I done. Oh, no. <laughs> we ain't even done. <laughs> Greet Philogius or Philologus yeah. yeah. and Julia, Nereus and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. The church of Christ greets you. Now I urge you, brethren. Note those who cause divisions and offenses, contrary to the doctrine which you learn and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Timothy, my fellow worker, and Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, Peter, my countrymen greet you. I, Tertius, who wrote this epistle, greets you in the Lord. 
Gaius, my host and the host of the whole church, greets you. Erastus, the treasurer of the city, greets you. And Quartus, a brother, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. It, 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 it's just amazing that he, he wanted to make sure that he mentioned each person by name. Everyone who has helped him in this, who has been instrumental in helping him spread this gospel and speak the truth and teach. Um, Paul is, he's, he's actually under arrest. He's actually writing as a prisoner. You know, uh, when we go back through Acts, you're going to see that although he was arrested and he was up under guards, they still he still had the ability to go to different places and still preach the gospel, even though he was under guard. He had some freedoms that most people who were uh, prisoners did not have. But this is what God had for him. So he's very, very thankful. And he wants everyone to realize and remember, these people, it's not about me. I'm just a, a vessel of who God has chosen. He taught me. Christ taught me. He sat with me for three years and he taught me all what I needed to know. I thought I knew everything as a Jew. But now what I know now just encapsulates everything of the mystery. And now I can tell it all, but look at all these people that helped me. And I want you to remember them. I want you to pray for them. I want you to recognize their abilities. Because even once I'm gone, they're still going to be here. You're going to need them. So know their names. Pray for them. Give them what they need so that they continue even after I'm gone. This is kind of what he's saying. So, A. Commendation of Phoebe. This is the New Living Translation. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, who is a deacon in the church of uh, Centuria. Welcome her in the Lord as one who is worthy of honor among God's people. Help her in whatever she needs, for she has been helpful to many and especially to me. Phoebe was a servant of the church in Centuria, and to receive her in a worthy manner, helping her along. Be miscellaneous greetings from Paul. Now, you know, I gave some of these names, so I'm not going to try to pronounce them all again. It's hard enough the first time. Give greetings, uh, give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila, my co workers in the ministry of Jesus Christ. In fact, they once risked their lives for me. I am thankful to them. And so are all the Gentile churches. Also give my greetings to the church that meets in their home. That's where we started, was in our home. I greet my dear friends, Pentheus. He was the first person from the province of Asia to become a follower of Christ. And I'm going to just skip the names, but we'll just keep going. Um, Give my greetings to Mary, who has worked so hard for your benefit. Greet uh, and Junia, my fellow Jews, who were in prison with me. They were highly respected among the apostles and became followers of Christ even before I did. Greet this person, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet this person, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend, whatever. Greet Apelles, a good man whom Christ approves. Give my greetings to the believers from the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet the Lord's people with the household from the household of Narcissus. Give my greetings to Try and Try, <laughs> the Lord's workers, and to the twins, and dear Persis who has worked so hard for the Lord. Um, give Rufus, I can't be, because this is in the way, uh, his very own, and also his dear mother, who has been a mother to me. Give my greetings to 
All those people. All those people and the brothers and sisters who meet with them. Give my greetings to these people and his sister and to Olympus and all the believers who met with them. Greet each other with a sacred kiss. All the churches of Christ send you their greetings. Goodness, <laughs> I don't know where I went now. Did I go back? I think I did. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, to Priscilla and Aquila, to various <laughs> others. You like that part, didn't you? Yeah, yeah I did too. Various others. Because, oh my goodness. And then see a final warning. And now I make one more appeal, my dear brothers and sisters. Watch out for people who cause divisions and upset people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you may have been taught. Stay away from them. Such people, I don't know why this is up in here. This is are not something of yeah, our Lord. I can't get this to down. Yeah. Uh, they are serving their own personal interests. By smooth talk and glowing words, they deceive innocent people. But everyone knows that you are obedient to the Lord. This makes me very happy. <coughs> Pardon me. I want you to be wise in doing right and to stay innocent of many of any wrong. God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. May the grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. So this is against those who selfishly cause divisions and offenses. And this happens in every church. I don't care how great the church is, how large it is, how small it is. It's always going to be those who want to cause division and want to cause offenses. Um, we've had them. They've been here. I praise God they're not here anymore, but we've gone through that. And not to say that there won't be some more that will come. We need to make sure that when we see this, that we, you know, we pray against the spirit because that's what it is. It's a spirit of division and a spirit of offenses. These a lot of people do not know that they carry this spirit. It's a part of their DNA. And it's bad. But when we see that, we have to we have to pinpoint and target the spirit so that we act as the full body of Christ. One mind, one Christ. Uh, to continue in obedience for God will give them victory. We always got to do what God says to do. And then greeting from Paul's companions. Timothy, my fellow worker, sends you his greetings, as do Lucius, Jason, and Sosipater, my fellow Jews. I, Tertius, the one writing this letter for Paul, send my greetings to as one of the Lord's followers. Huh. Again, remember, Paul's, Paul's in prison. He doesn't have writing material, but he's telling this Tertius everything so that Tertius can write it down. Gaius says hello to you. He is my host and also serves as host for the whole church. Erastus, the city treasurer, sends you his greetings. And so does our brother. Quartus, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So from Timothy, and remember, Timothy is a young pastor. So he's a pastor of a church whom Paul really takes in as like a son. He's really poured a lot into Timothy. Um, so Timothy... Um, he's giving greetings and others. And, and uh, Tertius, Paul's 
Emanuelis, or personal scribe, I wanted to say personal scribe, uh, from brethren to uh, from brethren at Corinth. So, are there any questions? This is it. One thing that I noticed when Paul's going through and, and greeting all of these people, mm -hmm. or telling them to be greeted, gives a lot of them positions. Yes. He says that they are beloved in the Lord. Uh, my beloved. Uh, part of it, they are approved. Um, my kinsmen. He gives them. He gives them a part of how. Yes. Which is way cool for him to take the time. Yes. To do yes. Um, I, I can remember a lot of the people who helped us. Uh, Michelle and I, when we started out in the ministry, and I, I, I don't believe we would be where we are today if it had not been uh, some of the people that helped us. Our, our former pastor, Marty uh, and Sully Smith, um, friends in Lancaster, um, another pastor here, because he's passed away, uh, but, but uh, Bishop... Uh, to speak with him, and he gave me some great advice. You know, there's been just those who have really attended. Uh, you know, all of you that are in leadership here today, you know, and are with us now. You know, uh, we we are able to do what we do because we know that we have great in the things that we do. And we couldn't do it without them. So there you all are, beloved, as were those who have helped us on our way. This is what Paul is starting to say. He's trying to give credit where credit is due. And letting you know of those who have really been outstanding in helping him. I'm sure there were plenty of others who, who did some things as well. But these are the ones who were who gave, in my opinion, their unselfish unwavering dedication to making sure that Paul was taken care of. They all knew he was a prisoner. They all knew that he was, you know, uh, 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 under great strain and stress because of those who did not want him to uh, preach the gospel of Jesus. You know, they all knew he had been shipwrecked, you know, and, and he, he he had been bitten by an asp and didn't die. And, you know, so many things that Paul went through in his journeys, you know, being ridiculed and talked about and spit on and beaten and flogged and so many different things. But there were those who stuck by him. In regards to all those things, there's many people that would probably kind of do like Peter did to Jesus at first. You know, I don't know you. I didn't know him. But there are those who, like you said about Priscilla and Aquila, they they risked their lives to make sure that Paul was taken care of and that he could do his job. So yeah, it was wonderful to see how Paul really not only just gave their names, but told about you know, even you know their position and how they were how they were loved, how they loved God, how God blessed them, how God saved them, many different things. And it was just wonderful. So this is Paul's doxology, Romans 16 through 27. Listen to that. So now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest and by the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith, to God alone be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. So to him who was able to establish you, now all glory to God who is able to make you strong. Just as my good news says, this message about Jesus Christ has revealed his plan for you Gentiles, a plan to keep secret from the beginning of time, but now as the prophets 
foretold, and as the eternal God has commanded, this message is made known to all Gentiles everywhere so that they might believe and obey him. So according to the gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the mystery once secret, but now revealed and made known to all nations. Pastor, yes. You know what it struck me for one of the first times I really like it hearing. You, know, you always hear the gospel or the good news of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. but, um, because in, in my um, translation, I mean, SB, and then I noticed also in the, the New King James that you have up there, was mm -hmm. according to my gospel. Yeah. Like he makes it really personal. Yeah. Which um, is really precious because there's nothing like personal testimony of, of sharing with others the goodness of God. And I just like how he says, um, to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel yeah. and the preaching yeah. of Jesus Christ. Right. So like if he can do it for me, he can do it for you yes. kind of thing. But yeah. I, I think I don't think I've ever seen anywhere else yeah. in my gospel or my yeah. news. That stands out, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, my gospel, uh, my good news. Mm -hmm. And I always go back to, it, it's just so amazing. And when we, again, we're going to do acts, but, but, but you'll see. To think that one moment you're prosecuting anyone who even thinks about saying something about Jesus, and the next moment you are face to face with the Spirit. I mean, you, th th this wasn't like I'm sitting in this room and there's no nothing here, and I'm just this is coming to my mind. No, he spent three years with the Spirit. And I, I, I can only actually believe, this is me, I believe the Spirit of God was right there physically in presence. Where he didn't just hear him, he saw him. Remember, he was blinded. And all of a sudden, boom, he can now see. The scales fell off his eyes. And he couldn't, it wasn't that he could just see the natural. God had to take him to a place where he could even see the supernatural. Because to now be in the presence of the person that you will help persecute, you now have an opportunity to really get the true good news. So yeah, when you're up here preaching and you're up here telling, yeah, this is your good news. <laughs> because you getting it firsthand straight from Christ's mouth. Yeah, it ain't just the gospel. I'm telling you what I actually know. I'm telling you what I actually experienced. I'm telling you what I was actually been taught. Yeah, that's, 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 I didn't think about that, but that's, I, I, I like that. My good news, my gospel. Not that it's, you know, him who is to be glorified, but the good news is the message about Jesus Christ. It's been re and he's revealed his plan to to the when it says the nations talking about the Gentiles or anyone who is not of Jewish ancestry for whosoever and that's what's that's what's so amazing that's why we're so thankful that we now have been made a part of the promise um, yeah I like that my goodness. Made known by the prophet, prophetic scriptures and made known for obedience to the faith. Then be to God alone, wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever. All glory to the only wise God through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. 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 Man, that's some good stuff. This, this yeah, yeah. any questions? Uh, this this Romans has been so so. Uh, words to ponder. We talked about servant. And the Greek word uh, diakonos was translated elsewhere as minister, deacon, 
often refers to one who helps cares for the one. Romans 16 verses 1 to 2. Um, that's, that is why, you know, uh, especially we're talking about ministers and ministries and deacons. I've been in churches where yeah, uh, 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 the, the, the ministers, even the deacons hold this high office. And people just, oh, you're deacon so-and-so, or you're evangelist so-and-so, or you're minister so-and-so. And it's all about- They're Pharisees. They're Pharisees, They're Pharisees. and Sadducees. You know, That's what they are. And the word means servant. You cannot uh -huh. be all this great uppity-uppity, muckety-muckety, grand poobah, and be a servant. No, you can't. You can't. As a servant, we give. It's about what we get. It's about what we give. And that's yes, a it is. A church that is in their house, a house church. Again, we start we we had we we had a house church for years before we really started Word for Life Worship Center. So and I had we had this Bible study that we started. My goodness gracious. Ever been a 15 years before we started the church? It was in the 90s. In the 90s. It was in the 90s. Yeah, so, I mean, we've had church in our house for a long time. A congregation where the number of disciples is not sufficient to justify a larger meeting place. Romans 16, 5, Colossians 4, 15, Philemon 1 and 2. We outgrew our house. We our, our living room was the sanctuary. Our basement was the junior church. All the kids. We had a bunch of kids. And that was all down the basement. Uh, the back room, where, where, which, is, which is our family room, that's where we had Bible study. You know, so, I mean, we, we used our whole house. The only rooms in our house that we did not use for the church, I believe, was our bedroom and then... Uh, Michelle had, well, I don't know, I think she even did some, you you did some ministry in your little room. Because we had yes. people come over and we had to do some counseling and all, you know, I did them in my office, Michelle would do them. So our bedroom was really about the only place where we did not have ministry. That's really cool. I mean, we used the whole house. That's quite a and when it got to the place to where we just, we had people come and it was standing room. God said, it's time to move. And we started looking, and this this was actually the first place we looked at was where we are right now, very first place. And we said, nah, we just kept looking, kept looking, kept looking, kept looking, and kept looking, and we came back to here. So this is where we are. Where God planted us. God planted us. Holy kiss. Christians greeted one another with a holy kiss to signify their warm affection for one another. A holy kiss would not convey the same meaning today <laughs> that it did in the first century. And That's true. Will be seriously misunderstood. Yep. Such commands are best obeyed by sub substituting an action such as a handshake or a hug or bow varying by culture that would convey the same meaning in a modern culture. Yes. Uh, and then mystery. <laughs> and then mystery in the New Testament. That which once was hidden or unknown, but has now been made known for all to know. Romans 16, 25, 26, Ephesians 3, 3 through 6. So these are the review questions that we'll go through. And uh, that's it. This is the main points of this chapter, which was concluding instructions and farewells. Then Paul's doxology, or his ending to this book. How does Paul describe Phoebe? She is a servant a of the very church. Very hard worker. Paul and of many. How does Paul describe Priscilla and Aquila? 
Fellow workers who risk their necks for Paul's okay. life. What? How does he, man, I'm telling you, I don't know what this is. For those of you who cannot see, there is this. Yeah, how does he refer to something, something that we're sending greetings? Yeah, whatever. Uh, the churches of Christ. <laughs> Must be the various others. Yeah, 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 various <laughs> others. Right, there you go. <laughs> how does Paul wow, how does Paul describe those who cause division and offenses? Come on. They serve not the Lord, but their own belly. They only care about their own selfish desires. They do not serve the Lord. Amen. Is the mystery referred to in verse 25 still hidden? No. Nope. It's been revealed and made known through preaching and the scriptures to all nations. We now, everyone knows now, everyone knows this has been given for the world. And Jesus, I don't care, Jesus Christ said it himself, for God so loved the world. The world. That includes all nations. That's everyone. Uh, what is the ob objective of the gospel according to verse 26? Spread good news. Obedience to oh, obedience to Christ. Lastly, is to God alone wise what should be ascribed? The glory of God, or to be the glory of God. Glory through Jesus Christ. Yeah, glory through Jesus Christ. Glory. Amen. The end. 